What's going on everyone? Welcome to Moonbill Garage. And today is the day that I am supposedly receiving my CNC controller, my stepper motor drivers, and my power supply for my DIY CNC plasma table build. So with that in mind, I made a run to my local scrap yard this morning and I picked up the stainless steel electrical enclosure box. Now obviously there's still some work I need to do to get this thing ready for those components. I mean, there's still some cables hanging out of this thing. There is a small uh, three phase converter in there apparently. So I'm gonna take that out. I may try to sell that, who knows? I may hang on to that for another project. I don't know. I don't even know if that thing even works, but I'm gonna open this thing up. I haven't even opened it yet. So I, don't, I have no idea what the inside even looks like. I'm gonna strip this thing down and get it ready to accept the components for the plasma table build. Let's get to it.
right, so new day. Uh, I finished stripping the box down yesterday and then just had some stuff to take care of. So just ran out of time. So this morning I started working on, let me find it, the mounting of the box. Um, my original plan was to just cut some angle iron and then screw them to the top. So I had cut those out, drilled and tapped them, and then I hung the box. And I was getting ready to figure out where I was going to drill the frame to bolt the angle iron to to mount the box. But since my plan was to bolt it right here, the angle iron was going to come up on the backside. And then I realized, well, shit, that's going to interfere with the mounting or with the installation of my water pan. So I lined everything up, kind of hung the box, and then you can see that I just outlined the angle iron, cut a notch out of the frame, and then just welded everything in place. And now the box bolts in from the inside right up there. So it's gonna have two bolts on each one. I just have one in each just to hold it in place, but you can see the holes are drilled. So that'll give me the mount for the box. And I, like I said, I want it on the front because I'm going to have probably an EPO switch to quickly kill it if need be right there on the lid. Um, I got it raised up. So underneath, the power is going to come in from underneath. Plasma cutter will be behind the box here on the, on the lower shelf. And then here on the side, underneath the water pan and protected from everything, I'm going to have all of my, my outputs for each individual motor. And then I'll probably have one big connector that has like all of my limit switches and everything like that coming into the side. This way, like I said, the, the box, the lid seals, there's a seal on the box. There you can see the seal on the inside. So this will seal up. It's under the water pan. All the connections are not only, you know, underneath, but they're also under part of the frame. So everything here should be really well protected. Uh, I don't suspect to have any leaks in the pan, maybe in the corners, if anything, like I said, I'm going to bend it all up. So the only real seams in the frame are going to be in the corners where everything's welded. So everything in the box should be really well protected. Like I said, the power is going to come in from underneath. So that should work out, hopefully, like I planned. All right, so now that I got the mounting of the box figured out, well, mostly figured out, I still want to add one more uh, support down low along the leg just to keep the box from, from flexing out. But I'll do that later. That's no big deal. I really want to start working on getting some of the electronics mounted and some of that stuff figured out. Let me show you what I've done so far. So we'll start here on the side. Here I went with these aviation style connectors. Now here's a bulkhead connector right here. So it's a four pin. One focus there. So it's a four pin connector there. There we go. Which is perfect because the motors are four wire. So I went ahead and I laid out my lines, laid out my connectors and uh, just drilled the holes and then mounted the four bulkhead connectors. Each one will get wired exactly the same. And then I labeled each motor so that I know from the outside exactly which one's which, just to keep things simple, keep things organized. If I need to troubleshoot, I'll know exactly which one is which. And then that, on the inside, are my four stepper drivers. And once again, each one is labeled. Just took a P-touch and labeled each one. So again, I know exactly which one is which. And I'm really trying to keep my cable runs as short as possible. So that's, again, that's why I mounted these right here. I'd be able to go right from here to the connector on the bulkhead. Now, the only thing I'm not thrilled about these is they are, come on, focus. They are solder. So I would have rather had, you know, be able to crimp the connectors and then install the pins, but whatever, you know, a few minutes with a soldering iron and those will be good to go. Um, power supply. My power supply, I'm hopefully going to be able to mount it right here. Again, power is going to come in from the bottom. So again, trying to keep the cable runs as short as possible. I'm hopefully going to have power come in right here. I'm still waiting on that connector. And then hopefully it'll just go right in right here, right to there. And then I'll have a couple of, this is a 24 volt power supply. So I have a couple of a 24 volt bus bar and a ground bus bar. And then everything will connect to those bus bars. And then everything is also going to ground to the case. 
All the stepper drivers will ground to the case also through the bus bar. So everything should be nice and grounded. All the input cables coming from the motors are gonna be shielded. Why are you focusing all weird? The, those wires are all gonna be shielded and grounded at the connector, which the connector is grounded to the case, which that will go ground to the power supply. Everything should have a good ground connection, hopefully eliminate any um, electrical interference, EMI, from the plasma cutter. So um, the controller. So this is the controller that I went with. Now, you know, I'm learning this as I go. So the reason why I went with this controller is because it has 16, focus, here it has 16 individual inputs along with a six axis controller. Now, the six axis is way overkill for what I'm gonna be doing, but I really wanted those 16 inputs because I wanna have each like limit switch on its own input. I've seen where people kind of just join them all together and have it on one input. I guess that's fine. It's probably fine. I just wanted them all separated. I don't know why. I don't have a reason for it. It's just what I wanted. Um, so that's why I went with this controller. Now, like I said, I've never used this controller. I've never done any of this. I'm learning. Uh, this, I'll probably, be, I'll probably be running Mach 3. So this is a USB controller. So I'm waiting on that to get here too. I'm, I got a bulkhead USB connector to go from the controller to the case. And the reason I did that is that way I can just plug my computer in directly to the case and not have to open it up and plug directly into the controller. So, you know, once I get all this other stuff on hand, once it all gets here, I'll be able to do some more layout of the box and get everything kind of really kind of dialed in as far as what's going where. This, this is really just kind of an introduction as far as my plans for the electronics and how I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Is it the best way? I don't know. It's the way I'm gonna do it. Um, there's, probably, there's plenty of other ways to do this. You can go as complicated or as simple. I'm trying to keep it as organized as possible, uh, trying to keep the cables and all the wiring as direct and as short as possible, and just trying to keep it neat and clean and organized. And that's just my electronics background, my avionics background, being anal when it comes to stuff like this. So this has really just been an introduction to how I'm gonna wire everything for the CNC plasma table. Once I get the rest of those parts in, like I said, the EPO switch, the input power, the USB bulkhead connector, uh, bus bars, once those get here, then I'll be able to continue doing the layout of the box. But for now, you know, like I said, this is just kind of my plan going forward. I appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.